So Nvidia has brought us to London and there's been a lot of speculation as to why. Some people thought it was 1080 Ti, I really hoped that it wasn't too many desktop cards in the last little while. Some people thought it was 1080M, I was in that camp, and we were all wrong. It was 1080, 1070, and 1060 all on a laptop without the M nomenclature and for a good reason. Massdrop is currently featuring their exclusive K7XX Red headphones built by AKG. Learn more and purchase one today at the link in the video description down below. NVIDIA is claiming to have a 20 million user install base for gaming notebooks, that it's increased by 30% over 2015 alone, and that it's 9x in the last five years. Gaming notebooks are becoming a big deal compared to before, where everyone is just like, Psh, they're just really large, clunky objects. They're becoming much more streamlined. Things like the Razer Blade, which I'm actually getting my notes off for this video, are actually really, really fast. And there's gonna be a new one coming out with a 1060 in it, and that's impressive. There will be laptops with desktop grade GTX 1060s in them that are as thin as 14 millimeters and as light as four pounds. And that's coming with more features as well, like more power efficient graphics, which should give you 30% more battery life over their previous Maxwell editions. And while the thin and light 1060 equipped laptops cater to me, you might want to play with a little bit more power and that would be fine. We saw a live demo on stage where they overclocked a 1080 inside of a laptop, got it to like 2062 megahertz, and it was only at like I think 73 degrees Celsius, something like that. We're going to have to test this in office and we're going to have to compare them against their desktop equivalents, but it is pretty exciting nonetheless. Now Nvidia does seem to be ditching the M altogether. They're just calling them desktop edition cards, but they are slightly different. What they're going to be looking for in terms of binning is going to be different, and in the case of the 1070, the specs are actually different. But Nvidia is saying that they should be within 10% of the perceived performance of their desktop variants. The Laptop Edition 1060 has 6 gigabytes of memory, 1280 CUDA cores, and a 1670 boost clock. The 1070 is a little weird with 8 gigabytes of memory, but 2048 CUDA cores and 1645 on the boost clock. Then the 1080 is more like its desktop edition brother with 2560 CUDA cores, 8 gigabytes of memory, and 1733 boost clock. In regards to TDP, they wouldn't give us any actual numbers, but what they would tell us is that the 1060 should be basically the same TDP as a 970M, the 1070 should be the same TDP as a 980M, and then the 1080 should be the same TDP as a 980 non-M, the desktop class 980. Now they'll be equipped with a dual FET power supply, multi-phase power controllers, and some laptops will come with factory overclocks. But do note that there's no overvoltage or undervoltage control at all on the card. And unfortunately we weren't able to play with overclocking at the event, so that style of video will have to come later on. Now in terms of tech, you get all the same stuff as the desktop side does. You're going to be able to have Ansel in your games, you're going to have NVIDIA VR works if you're into that. All of these different graphics cards are VR ready, quote unquote. That will mean more or less depending on which card you get. And there's been some improvements to G-Sync. The main one is 120 hertz. So you're going to have 120 hertz 1080p panels and 120 hertz 1440p panels, although we didn't see any of those today. That's pretty exciting if you're into high refresh rate gaming on the go, which has not been a huge thing in the past. Okay, so I'm back in Canada now and I was able to sit down and pour over some of the benchmarking results that I gathered from the laptops at the event in London. There were two rather unfortunate things to note here. One is that Nvidia did not allow me to test any of the laptops that were equipped with a GTX 1060. This was frustrating as those were what I was most excited for, the thin and lights. Oh well. The second unfortunate thing is that the games they allowed us to use for testing were weird. Why they had Bioshock Infinite and Shadow of Mordor there, I have no idea. Getting results of 181-ish frames per second in Bioshock for the 1080 is sweet, but not very impactful or useful. I would have rather seen more modern games that actually could really push the platform and see what it's capable of. Tomb Raider does that, but it's pretty cherry-picked. That being said, here's the performance numbers. They were all ran at 1080p due to the resolution limitations of the ASUS laptop, and then I paired that with the highest presets I could throw at it. 
Now this wasn't a great comparison. Not only was 1080p not a challenge for either of these cards or laptops as a whole, but the ASUS laptop had an i7-6820HK and the Clevo had an i7-6700 desktop edition processor, so it was not the same on either end. But there you go, it's fast, sure. Both myself and the venerable Linus Sebastian himself will have benchmarking comparisons and whatnot for you guys in the future as we get some laptop samples in the office. But that's actually all for now. I don't have a ton to say on those benchmarking numbers as they're on kind of older, not as relevant games. But we can look at the Tomb Raider number and know that these things are going to be quite fast. And I'm very happy that they have desktop grade graphics in laptops in a full range instead of just on the 980. It's exciting for the future. Braintree is code for simple online payments. So if you're building a mobile app and searching for a simple online payment solution, check out Braintree. With the Braintree V.0 SDK, which is just one small snippet of code, you're all set up in less than 10 minutes. They even have support staff ready to walk you through the process over the phone if you do need them. Their code supports Android, iOS, and JavaScript clients, and they have SDKs in seven different programming languages. They make it easy to offer multiple mobile payment types, including PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, Android Pay, cards, and more, all with a single integration. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash Linus. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you liked this video that was in two different locations. If you liked that, hit the like button and get subscribed. If you were like, no, you're only allowed filming a video in one country at a time. It's rude if you do it in more than one country at a time. Hit the dislike button, that's fair. I don't really understand the argument, but you could do that. If you wanna buy a shirt like this one, you can click the link in the video description down below. If you wanna buy a product that I may or may not have mentioned in this video, you can click the Amazon link in the video description down below as well. Check out this video, which is on the 980 in a laptop that I shot in a third country. So basically, whatever, I'm just screwing with you at this point, but I'll see you next time.